Hey everyone, I hope you all had a good weekend and that, you know, y'all are doing well and hanging in there in this uh, first month of the semester. Now month one is behind us, so yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. I feel like this is the time of the semester where we all start to really feel the pace of the semester and um, it can be tiring. So I hope you all are taking time to, you know, recharge and do what you need. So yeah, um, we are delving into a discussion around doing gender this week. So this discussion is really building on our conversations of the last few weeks and thinking about, you know, how our sociologists articulating the process of doing gender. So a few key terms to, you know, unpack in this discussion that we'll start out with is, you know, we're thinking about in that Marx and Fourier text, the, the ways that the authors articulate gender accountability. So thinking about, you know, gender accountability can be understood as this way to gently induce conformity. So it's essentially essentially asking for explanations for different gender transgressions. So gender transgressions, in other words, thinking about that as a defiance of, um, you know, binary frameworks and expressing and um, reinforcing binary frameworks. So, you know, the authors use this example of, you know, uh, a way that we could understand accountability is, you know, consider a dad who's asked his son to go hunting and the son refuses. So, you know, the son then follows up their refusal by saying, I can't go hunting, I have football tryouts to prepare for. So that, you know, that uh, clarification is seen as a way to, you know, essentially recodify, uh, you know, concepts of masculinity and instead of, you know, just leaving the gender transgression at the, the level of refusal to go hunting, it's following it up with, you know, some kind of clarification that enables the, um, the kid to account for their gender transgression. So, you know, thinking about the ways that, you know, we would understand gender accountability a gender accountability, excuse me, as, you know, a gentler form of gender policing. So gender policing would be understood as a way to exact conformity. So it's, you know, it's an elevated form of uh, gender accountability in the sense that, you know, it can come in the form of bullying, name calling, uh, loss of connections. So, um, you know, loss of family or friend connections because of, you know, one's expression of gender or defiance of binary frameworks, and it can even, you know, take shape as violence as well. So, you know, thinking about these ways of understanding policing and accountability with regards to gender, it really changes depending on the circumstance. So, you know, the ways that one might experience gender policing or different forms of accountability in, uh, you know, a rural town in Virginia that could be different than, you know, saying, say going to a queer dance party in Richmond. So in other words, the ways that folks may ask one to, you know, account for gender, the ways that uh, folks may police gender would look different, you know, in those different, you know, s sets of circumstances and situations. So, you know, the, the text discusses a little bit of the ways that, you know, we may ask people to hope, hold us accountable when it comes to gender norms. So thinking about the ways that, you know, as we're asking people to evaluate our performance, this can take shape. You know, my mind immediately goes to influencer culture. So we could think about influencer culture being this key example of, you know, asking folks to comment on or evaluate one's gendered performance. So if you're, you know, seeking feedback, you know, seeking, you know, any form of, you know, validation, you know, through what you're posting, um, you know, seeking to engage audiences in those ways, that can definitely be seen as asking folks to weigh in on one's gendered performance. So just one example there. Um, the text also brings up this key term of cultural intelligibility. So, you know, while gender expressions and rules can vary across cultures, um, you know, they'll vary across one's different intersecting identities, uh, the expectation is that you do gender 
in some way. So, you know, it's this notion of being outside of a symbolic meaning making system when, you know, one becomes unintelligible. And it's really important to note that cultural intelligibility is an evolving and fluid concept depending on different the way that different social institutions interact with the social construction of gender so for instance you know if media is you know offering greater representation of trans and non-binary folks that is then going to impact you know different notions of cultural intelligibility as it you know is bringing you know a more diverse range of folks into a symbolic meaning making system so um you know let's move into thinking about how you know those notions of gender policing and accountability tie into the weston zimmerman piece so it's really important to note that the weston zimmerman piece of doing gender came out in 1987 so you know folks may note that this piece does rely on binary frameworks to articulate the relationship between sex and gender. So um, thinking about in 1987, there being less, you know, less language, um, less legibility to understanding what it looked like to, you know, articulate the social construction of biological sex in relation to gender. So thinking about that, but understanding their particular concept of gender as an accomplishment as being a key contribution to sociological thought when it comes to gender. So, you know, let's unpack that a little bit. You know, what uh, Weston Zimmerman mean by when they say that gender is an accomplishment. So, you know, to participate in reinforcing all of these codified uh, notions of masculinity and femininity, you know, requires navigating different signs, systems, and cues in various ways. And to do that in ways that, you know, continuously reinforce binary understandings of gender is understood as an accomplishment. So, you know, for one to, you know, successfully, you know, uh, negotiate all of those different meaning making systems to, you know, articulate their own gender in a way that reinforces binary frameworks um, can be understood as this accomplishment. So it's important to note, you know, this notion of an accomplishment is not necessarily like, you know, hey, it's a celebration, you know, you have, you know, ding, 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 one, um, you know, the reinforcement of, um, you know, articulating binary gender, but to think about this in terms of social rewards. So, you know, obviously to, you know, reinforce different binary understandings of gender, it helps one, uh, you know, navigate different social spaces to, you know, be, um, you know, a part of, you know, various social systems in ways that are legible to others. So that in and of itself, it, it demonstrates this notion of, you know, being a successful social subject. So this is not to say that, you know, this is a, you know, necessarily within, you know, our individual, um, you know, and uh, class conceptualization of, you know, the ways that, you know, reinforcing these different ideas can, uh, you know, be detrimental in various ways. It's thinking about, you know, the, the ways that um, reinforcing gender in relation to the, the different social spaces that we navigate can be understood as, um, you know, you have done the work of, uh, you know, reinforcing binary gender. So, you know, in other words, you have, you know, successfully uh, navigated all of these different interactions and, you know, uh, cues in ways that, um, you know, do the work of solidifying binary frameworks. So, you know, thinking about these concepts in relation to the Alok video where, um, you know, the performance artist notes the different ways that style can be understood as very political. So, you know, thinking about how what we wear can be seen as, you know, an act of resistance to the structures of policing that we're articulating. So really deconstructing this notion of, you know, the reinforcement of binary gender being an accomplishment um, and instead you know thinking about what does it look like to articulate one's own gender to you know manifest one's you know own expressions of self in ways that you know are unique to them so um, thinking about how you know Alok does 
offer really key points around the the relationship between how we understand you know transphobia in relation to these concepts of gender policing and thinking about you know the ways that transphobia or you know discrimination against you know different trans folks discrimination against different non-binary folks and those you know who are you know defying uh, you know binary gender categorization how you know, manifesting, you know, different forms of transphobia is a way to police binary gender, to make sure that people stay in line and, you know, are, uh, you know, participating in, you know, this, uh, these various ways that re we reinforce binary gender. So, you know, Alok does point out the ways that you know, violence is a key part of that, how bullying is a key part of that, as well as inaction is a key part of that. So, you know, they talk about the ways that, you know, people don't intervene in harassment, say in a big city like New York, because, you know, there is this, uh, you know, undercurrent of gender policing that takes shape. So thinking about, you know, if someone is to not intervene and, in, you know, someone being harassed for their gender expression, it can be seen as, you know, part of a set of logics that, you know, rationalize the ways that, uh, you know, gender policing is a fact of life. When, in, you know, when, you know, through our discussions in this class, we see the ways that, you know, asking people to fit into these binary boxes is, you know, fundamentally, you know, harmful and limits, as you all have pointed out, it limits the expression of truth, you know, for, you know, various folks. So, um, you know, thinking about, you know, a local story needs to be understood through an intersectional perspective too. So thinking about, you know, the ways that they highlight how, you know, Islamophobia, how uh, transphobia, how, you know, all of these different forms of, you know, racism come together in their experience to, you know, shape their particular, um, the, the ways that they've experienced harassment and discrimination. So, you know, noting all of those different, you know, intersecting identities and how that's impacted them is really key to, you know, understanding their story. Um, so, you know, when we, when we do, you know, think about, you know, Alok's point around, you know, style being political too, I'm curious what you all think about that point in relation to this conversation about how we police gender, you know, just requesting that people engage in different forms of conformity. So, We'll talk about this a little bit more on the discussion board, and I, I look forward to hearing what you all have to say. All right, have a great week.